الله يعطيك العافيه دكتور الله يعافيك هلا محمد دكتور احنا عندنا كويز الاربعاء صح؟ برضه بحكي فيها اخر المحاضره طيب بدي اسالك عن الانتر ربط طيب بصير؟ يس اوف كورس هذا المطلوب يو هاف اباوت ذا ماتيريال دكتور اباوت ذا لوجيستيك اوكي دكتور هسه اللي جلوبالي انتر ربط هسه انا المفروض اني اعمل لل للاي بت اللي في السي سي ار يس لازم اعملها كلير صح؟ يس لانها باي ديفولت هي 1 بمعنى اخر طيب Uh, all interrupts are disabled uh, when you power up the microcontroller when you come out from the reset state all interrupts are disabled both maskable and non-maskable even the x bit is set so you need to set to clear it in order to enable the xirq interrupt but once you enable it you cannot disable it and we talked about this right طيب وايل انه انا اجاني اول انتربت ريكوست اوتوماتيكلي راح الاي ترجع ست عشان انا اعمل ديسيبل yes. للاول جلوبالي يس اوتوماتيكلي ذا سي بي يو ويل فينش ذا كرنت انستراكشن وين ات ريسيفز ان انتربت ريكوست ريكاردس اوف ذا سورس ات سيف ات ويل فينش ذا كرنت انستراكشن ات ويل سيف ذا سي بي يو ريجسترز تو ذا ستاك ات ويل اتش ذا ادريس اوف ذا انتربت سيرفيس روتين فروم ذا انتربت فيكتور كورسبوندنج انتربت فيكتور ادريس And then it will disable all interrupts by setting the I bit, setting the X bit, and it will start executing the interrupt service routine. طبعا هذا كله اوتوماتيكلي بس انه yes. انا اللي بدي yes. اه تمام طب دكتور هيك اللوكالي شو بكون عملها انه ايش ال يعني ايش هي الانتربت وايش السورس تاعها؟ uh, uh, now enabling interrupts locally has something to do with your program. Sometimes uh, for example you are using the A to D converter and it is associated with interrupt service. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. Sometimes uh, during the life cycle of your program, you might need to disable this interrupt only, or uh-huh. to enable this interrupt only. You might have different sources of interrupt in your program. So this gives you local uh, local enable for this source of interrupt, individual okay. enable. Okay. Okay. So you may have you may use let's say five sources of interrupts, and okay. at some different uh, li- during the lifetime of your program you may you want to enable four of them you want to disable three of them and so on تمام. okay while the others are uh, still uh, enabled شو البت المسؤول عنها locally it depends for example the irq bit the irq uh-huh. interrupt uh, you can enable it using in the interrupt control register if you remember oh, oh, oh. you remember that Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, then you have to enable it globally. The same thing for other uh, uh, peripheral devices, for the interrupts associated with other peripheral devices. As we will go on in the course, we will see that each peripheral device is associated with one or more service interrupt uh, requests, and each of them can be enabled or disabled using specific bits in specific uh, registers. <laughs> All right. Me, <laughs> me. اوكي دكتور يا زلمه اه يعني دكتور الاي بت ما لها دخل بالجلوبال انترنت الاي بت ما لها دخل بال النون ماسكبل انترنت صح؟ يس الاكس ما هو ذا اونلي نون اكسترنال نون ماسكبل انترنت هو الاكس اي ار كيو واللي هو انيبلد بالاكس بت اونلي هلا الماسكبل انترنت اللي منهم الاي ار كيو واللي منهم مثلا الاي تو دي انتربت اللي منهم مثلا الاس بي اي انتربت اللي منهم البي دبليو ام انتربت كل هدول ار ماسكبل انتربت ايتش اوف ذيم هاز لوكال انتربت انيبل اند ان اوردر تو انيبل ات يو نيد تو كلير ذيس بت ويتش از ذا اي بت تمام اوكي Oh, so now let's move to the second part of this chapter. In the first part, we presented, we discussed the idea or, and the concepts behind uh, the interrupts. We discussed how they are implemented in the HCS12 uh, microcontroller, and we showed how to program interrupts or how, or how to use a progr- uh, interrupts in your programs, uh, whether you are writing in C or whether you are or in uh, Uh, in assembly uh, language, and we looked at three different sources of interrupts uh, 
uh, in the SGA12 microcontroller, which are the IRQ, XIRQ, and the SWI interrupt, or the software interrupt. And as we go on, as I said, we will introduce more types of interrupts, more sources of interrupts. Now, the second part in this uh, chapter basically is related uh, is related to the clock generation and resets. In the first part, we talked about the interrupts. Now we will talk about what, uh, how we can, what types of clock we can use, how to generate the clock, how to specify the clock rate, and how uh, what uh, what sources may cause uh, reset may reset the microcontroller. We already talked about one source, which is what. How can we reset the microcontroller? The reset pin. Yes, we, we, we said that there is a special input called reset in this microcontroller, which is active low signal. Whenever you put zero to this pin for a specific period of time, it will reset the microcontroller without powering off and then powering on the microcontroller. So this is one source of reset. Now, there are other sources of resets in this uh, microcontroller, and we will talk about them briefly in this section. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, what we are going to talk about, we are, we are going to talk about the CRG block, which is the, the clock, uh, uh, the clock uh, uh, rate uh, generation block, which is responsible for generating the clock that is required by the microcontroller. Part of this block is the phase lock loop and the uh, computer operating properly uh, blocks and the real time interrupt the real time interrupt. So all of these are components in the CRG block, which is the clock uh, and reset, uh, clock and reset generation uh, uh, block. So now, uh, uh, as we said uh, earlier in this uh, course, that every microcontroller needs a clock to operate because essentially any microcontroller is a, is a very large uh, synchronous sequential circuit. Uh, which means the events that occur inside this microcontroller or this system are synchronized. So we need a time base to synchronize these, uh, these events. And that's why we need a clock. And as we said earlier also, that this clock is basically a periodic square wave of certain uh, period T, which is the reciprocal of the frequency. <coughs> Okay, now uh, uh, the CRG block inside the HCS12 microcontroller is responsible for generating the clock that is used by the microcontroller, which is in turn used to execute the programs and to clock all peripheral devices inside the microcontroller. So now the clock is not only used to by the CPU that is inside the microcontroller, it is also used, as we said maybe earlier, all peripheral devices that need a clock, need timing, use this main clock to derive their own clocks. Okay, now for this microcontroller, this clock that is used by the microcontroller can be, uh, uh, can, can come from three different sources. The first one is basically to use an external crystal oscillator to generate a periodic square sine wave with certain frequency. And then you feed this into the microcontroller, which has some internal circuitry that converts this periodic square wave into periodic, periodic sine wave into periodic square uh, uh, wave. So uh, as we will, uh, as we have in the, list, in the following slide here, this is the SCS12. And one possible way to, to clock this microcontroller is basically to bring this component, which is a crystal or ceramic resonator. It is a special special piece of hardware that resonates, that changes uh, uh, the applied voltage when there is a voltage difference across its terminal, which will result in a periodic square wave, sine wave that is fed into the uh, uh, microcontroller. And this crystal is connected to the microcontroller using these two special pins, which are the crystal and e-crystal pins with specific values for these capacitors in order to reduce uh, noise. And these, the values of these uh, capacitors can be found in the data sheet in case you are going to 
uh, work with this chip directly. However, on our board that we did not see in this course, we did not see in this course, is already, this circuit is already uh, connected. So basically this crystal has certain frequency and it is able, capable of producing a periodic sine wave of certain frequency. Now this sine wave is converted into periodic square wave inside this, uh, inside, using special circuit inside inside this, uh, uh, inside the microcontroller. Okay, so this is one source for the clock, which is basically using an external crystal uh, 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 oscillator of certain uh, uh, frequency. Okay, now the second way to, to specify the clock is basically using the phase lock loop circuit, which is a special block inside the CRG block that takes the incoming uh, 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 clock signal generated by this crystal oscillator and multiply its frequency. So basically this module scales up or down the frequency of the incoming clock and this scaled clock can be used as the system clock or as the main clock or the core clock of the microcontroller. And another way to specify the clock is basically to, uh, instead of connecting a crystal oscillator or connecting a crystal oscillator and scaling its periodic square wave using the PLL uh, uh, block is basically to bring a ready made square wave, wave or square wave form and feed it into the microcontroller. So you don't connect a crystal, you just maybe you can bring a a function generator or a triple five timer that is generating already a square wave and you take this square wave and connect it directly to the clock input of the microcontroller and the, this figure shows this configuration if you want to use a, 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 a square wave that is generated by some external source you simply feed it to this input crystal and you leave the second input not connected and as I said, we will not work uh, with this microcontroller uh, because it is already on the board and connected to some crystal oscillator. But this is just in case. And uh, it just here shows how to do that, how to tell the microcontroller that the incoming signal to this pin is basically uh, a square wave, it's not a sine wave. You need to connect this pin to the ground while here you connect this pin to uh, VDD to tell the microcontroller what is the source of the clock. In the third configuration, if you choose the phase lock loop, which means that you take the frequency generated by uh, this crystal oscillator and then you scale it up or down, you can connect here some filter to specify the bandwidth of the uh, signal to this pin, which is the XFC. So this is a, this, this is a filter, bandpass filter, with certain frequency in order, and these the values of these can be found in the data sheet. That has to be connected to this, this pin in case you want to use the phase loop loop to generate or to scale up the clock that is generated by the uh, crystal uh, uh, clock. Okay, so these are the ba basically the three types of clocks that you can use. External crystal oscillator, or uh, you take the external clock coming from this crystal oscillator, you scale it up using the PLL block, or you feed the microcontroller with a square wave from some external uh, uh, source. So this is the uh, block diagram of the CRG block, block and reset generation block. So here we have, uh, uh, sub-blocks. We have here the, uh, the OSC sub-block which is responsible of connecting the microcontroller to the external clock whether it is coming from the crystal isolator or from some external source. So it is called the OSC block. We have also the PLL uh, block which can take the clock, the clock that comes from the OSC block and scale it up to produce the PLL the clock or the phase lock loop clock. <laughs> and the system can use either this clock or this clock, the OS, 
OSC clock or the oscillator clock. Now, this oscillator clock is basically the, the clock that is coming from the external clock, the crystal or the external source, which you can use it as the system clock or you can use the scaled version, the scaled version, which is the PLL clock that is coming from the phase lock uh, loop. Now, one of these clock can be used to derive the E clock, which we already know, which is half of this, of these, uh, one of these, uh, any of these clocks, and the core clock. The core clock, or they call it the system clock sometimes, it is basically uh, 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 the clock that is, that we have here. Now, these are the connections specified uh, uh, by the data sheet in order to operate the phase locked uh, uh, loop. Now, the output of this, this sub block takes the oscillator clock and the phase locked loop clock, and it operates some of the uh, functionalities that is here, such as the computer operating properly, the RTI, the real time interrupts, uh, uh, the clock quality uh, checker or the clock uh, uh, monitor, and the reset generator, and the reset generator to reset the system okay so the uh, the last input is basically the reset input which is part of this uh, which is the responsibility of this block to monitor the spin in order to decide whether to reset the microcontroller or not so now we will look at the details of this sub block and these uh, uh, features now inside the oscillator block before we move we have another small inside it we, there is a, a, a block which is called the clock monitor and this clock monitor uh, as the name implies is basically responsible for uh, of monitoring the quality of the oscillator clock and if there is a problem with the oscillator clock the clock monitor if enabled it is a feature for this block if this clock monitor sub block is enabled and there is a problem with the oscillator clock you can configure the microcontroller to reset or to go in what we call self-clock mode as we will see later. So if there is a problem with the oscillatory clock, the clock monitor can watch this clock and decide what happens when there is a problem with the oscillator, uh, when there is a problem with the oscillatory clock, either to reset the microcontroller or to put it on what we call the self-clock uh, uh, mode. Okay, so we talked about this. Uh, this is, uh, these are the, some of the details that I already mentioned. The choices of the clock source, the user can uh, choose between external crystal or oscillator to produce the clock signal. So you can use crest, uh, external crystal or some oscillator. It could be function generator, it could be, um, triple five timer, any circuit that can generate a square wave. Now, uh, as we said, this is the details how to connect the external clock oscillator. These are the specifications of the external clock that you want to feed into the microcontroller. If you choose to do that, it has to, to, to its magnitude has to be 2.5 peak magnitude for D family and all that stuff. But this is, as I said, for our case, when we, we use the board, we don't have to worry about uh, a lot about this part, let's say. But for this part, yes, you need to take it into consideration because these pins are available. So you can override this clock. Now, as we said, the, the, the clock that is coming out from the OSC module can be uh, used as the system clock, or it can be scaled by the phase lock loop block in order to scale it up. Uh, so the system clock, as we said, can be the oscillator clock or the phase lock loop clock. Here, this or this. And regardless which one you choose, this will be this clock or this clock will be divided by two to produce the E clock which is used to control the instruction execution and the peripheral uh, uh, operation. Now this block, like any other block 
in the microcontroller has a set of registers, special functional registers that can be used to configure and use this block to configure the features and the operation of this block. So there are a set of registers. These are some of these uh, uh, registers related to the operation of uh, this block. And if you look at these registers, each has a name, but at the same time, it has an address. And you can check the address of this register in the textbook or in the data sheet, but we will work with names. We don't care about uh, addresses because these names are defined in the header file that we include in our programs in Code Warrior. So we work with names better than working with uh, numbers. So these are the names of these special registers. And each of these special registers has a set of bits that has names. And the values of these bits usually specify uh, uh, the operation of the associated block whether it is a, a, an input output or peripheral device or a feature for the microcontroller such as the CRG uh, uh, block. Okay, and we will go through some of these registers as we uh, go in this uh, chapter. But what I want to stress out here is that um, uh, this is a major concept when it comes to working with microcontroller which is basically the features, uh, the peripheral devices, the input output ports, the features of the microcontroller are usually controlled by special registers. We usually call them special function registers, <coughs> which specify, which we use as programmers to specify uh, and set up the microcontrollers and its uh, functionality. And we already saw this when we talked about the ports, uh, the input output ports, we said there are, for every, for every port, there are two registers associated with any port. The direction uh, register and the data register for that port. The direction register is used for configuration. You use it to configure the port, whether it is input or uh, output, while the data port holds the input or the output data. Now, uh, the operating mode of this modes of this block, basically we have the normal mode or the run mode, which is basically all functional parts of the CRG block are running in this mode. In the wait mode, we will talk about it later also. Basically, this mode can be invoked by executing the wait instruction, WAI instruction. And when this instruction is executed, it will allow the user to disable the system and core clock by programming the individual bits in this special register. So if you execute the wait instruction, you can configure the microcontroller to disable the system the, or the core clock by specifying what to do uh, through the uh, clock select uh, register. Another mode of operation is the stop mode. Basically, this mode is invoked when you execute, when the CPU executes the stop instruction. When the CPU executes the stop instruction, it enters the stop mode. And what happens on the stop mode depends on this bit, which is the pseudo stop uh, mode bit uh, that is available in this register, the clock select register. Uh, which differentiates between two sub-modes in this of the stop mode. The full stop mode, which is, uh, in which, which, which is activated when this bit is zero, and the pseudo stop mode, which is activated when this bit is one. So what, what, ha what is the difference between the full stop mode and the pseudo stop mode is basically what is turned on and what is turned off in terms of clocks. For example, in the full stop mode, the oscillator is disabled. So the oscillator block is completely disabled and thus all the system and core clock are stopped. So all the clocks are dead. So nothing basically is, nothing basically is running. However, in pseudo stop mode, the oscillator continues to run and most of the system and the core clocks are stopped. So the oscillator block uh, is still running. In other words, the OSC clock is 
active. However, most of the system and core clocks are stopped. stopped. The CPU clock is stopped. The peripheral, most of the peripheral devices are uh, stopped. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, yes, Muhammad. دكتور طيب بقدر من الويت مود اني اعمل ديلي ويزاوت انه اعمل انا البروجرام اللي كنا نعمله عشان اعمل ولا هذا بس خاص في الهاردوير؟ رح نحكي عن الويت مود والستوب مود بالتفصيل اكثر لقدام بس بيسكلي احنا بنطلع عليهم بشكل عام وي هاف نورمال مود وي هاف ويت مود وي هاف ستوب مود اند وي هاف سيلف كلوك مود اند وات هابنز ان ذا ويت مود كان بي سبيسيفايد باي از وي ويل سي سون Uh, by this register, by the value that is uh, uh, stored in this register. And in the stop mode, we can choose what happens. Either we have full stop or we have pseudo uh, stop uh, 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 mode. Now, the last mode of operation for this block is basically the selfie clock mode. And as the name implies, uh, uh, basically uh, uh, this mode Uh, in this mode, the microcontroller clocks itself. The microcontroller clocks itself. Uh, and how, it, uh, how does it do that? Basically, uh, it has an internal clock oscillator that runs at very low frequency. And this mode basically is activated if the clock monitor is enabled and it detects that there is a problem with the oscillator clock. And in this case, uh, it can invoke or activate the self clock mode, which means that the microcontroller is not using the external clock now. It is using its own clock, which is, which is of low uh, uh, frequency. So basically, this mode is entered or activated if both, if the clock monitor is enabled, which is basically can be controlled by this bit, which is the CME bit, clock monitor enable bit, that is available in this special register, PLL control register. Not only that, you need to enable the selfie clock mode uh, by setting the SS, uh, SCME bit in the PLL control register. So basically, in order to use this mode, which is important in case uh, you may have Uh, a problem with the oscillatory clock, you need to enable two things. You need to enable the clock monitor sub block, and you need to enable the self clock monitor uh, mode of the CRG block. Now, if you don't enable the self clock mode, but you enable the clock monitor, now, when there is a problem with the clock, the microcontroller will reset. It will not enter this mode because you did, you did not enable it. It will not enter the selfie clock mode. So this is the, the, the idea, the meaning of this sentence. In order to activate this mode, in case there is a failure in the main oscillator, you need to set this bit in this register, and you need to set this bit, and you need to set this uh, bit, okay? And this, only, this mode is only inactivated if there is a loss of clock in the external oscillator or in the cluster, basically in the OSC block, which is this clock, this clock. So if there is a problem with this clock, which is monitored by the clock monitor hardware, the micro, the, you as a programmer, you can decide whether to reset the microcontroller or to enable the self clock uh, mode Uh, to clock the microcontroller. Okay. Now this uh, this uh, this such diagram diagram uh, you can see it frequently in the data sheet, which basically shows um, uh, uh, shows it's a logical representation of how to enable and disable different uh, uh, features. For example, uh, uh, as we said, we can use the, the OSC clock, the OSC clock or the PLL clock, which is derived from the OSC clock. This is the meaning of this connection, that the Facebook loop takes as input the oscillatory clock and scales it to produce 
the PLL clock. Now, what is the system clock? Is it coming from here or from here? Basically here it tells us it is PLL or SCM. What is PLL cell? This is a bit. This is a bit. In some control register that selects whether the system clock is coming from the phase lock loop or coming from the oscillator clock. So if it is one, you are selecting this. If it is zero, you are selecting this. So this is kind of a multiplexer. So basically, what is what is left, what, 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 the rest is almost the same. And as we go on, you will be able to interpret what is shown on this block. For example, here it tells us uh, the RTI, the real time uh, interrupt, what when it is enabled. It is enabled if this condition, if this condition, this condition, this condition, which are basically bits and special function registers uh, are uh, met. If these conditions are met, for example, you activate RTI and so on. Okay, this is, so this is kind of logical representation, how to enable, what are the bits? So these are bits, these are the names of bits that are in some special registers through which you can control these features okay so it's not it, it's it might look weird at the beginning but as we go on you can come back later and after you uh, uh, after you are introduced to the registers and the bits and the uh, details of operation for these blocks you, can, you will know what is the meaning of each of these uh, bits. So basically this block, this one is an AND gate. If this condition is satisfied, you pass this. If this condition is satisfied, you pass this uh, and so on. Okay. <coughs> so this is the first one of the special registers related to the CRG block, which is called the CRG clock select register or CRG cell. So in your program, you can refer to this register by this name, CRG cell or the clock, the CRG select register, or it is also called the clock cell register. And it has eight bits and each of these bits is related or associated with some feature of the CRG block. The most important for us is this bit, which is the PLL select bit. And basically, it is the seventh uh, uh, bit in this register. And the default value of it is zero. So when you reset or start up the microcontroller, the default value is zero. And what is the functionality of this bit? Basically, when it is zero, the system clocks are derived from uh, the oscillator clock. When it is one, oops. Yes, here. Uh, if it is one, the system clocks are derived from the phase phase locked loop clock. So in other words, this bit, uh, using this bit, you can select whether your system clock is derived from directly from the OSC clock, which is the main oscillator, or from the phase locked loop. In other words, the scaled version of the oscillator uh, 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 clock. Uh, and if you look also, here we have the PSTP block, which is basically the pseudo stop uh, bit which we talked about it uh, before. When this bit is zero, this means that uh, 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 pseudo stop, stop mode. Uh, now, when you execute a stop instruction, if this bit is zero, oscillator is di disabled in stop mode, which means full stop mode. If it is one, oscillator continues to run in this stop mode, which is pseudo mode. As we said, in the stop, the stop mode, we have two sub modes, either full, or two versions, either the full uh, stop or the pseudo stop. And basically the difference, either you stop the microcontroller completely or you keep some uh, of the modules uh, uh, running. 
Okay, now the remaining bits are related to the weight mode. Uh, basically, they tell or through which you can configure the microcontroller or some features to be available during the weight mode or not available during the weight mode. For example, the RTIW bit, it tells the microcontroller whether the RTI block stops or does not stop when the microcontroller controller enters the weight mode. When you execute the weight instruction, what happens to the RTI? Will it continue to work? What happens to the, uh, 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 the, the PLL during weight mode? What happens to the COP, computer operating properly during weight mode? Does it stop or it keeps, uh, does it, or it is allowed to keep working as uh, uh, normal? Mohammed? دكتور بس سؤال شو الفكره من انه يكون السيستم كلوك جاي من تو ديفرنت سورس يعني بس مشان الريداندنسي ولا في فكره لا لا اتس نوت ريداندنسي ات از ا واي تو سكيل ذا لو فريكوانسي ذات از كامينج فروم اوت سايد ذا مايكرو كنترولر انتو ا هاير فريكوانسي سو سبوز ذات يو يو هاف ا كريستال اوسيليتر ذات از 8 ميجا هرتز ذس از ذا اونلي crystal that you have, but you want to operate the microcontroller at a higher frequency. So either you bring an external hardware to scale this frequency up, which basically one way to do that is using a phase lock loop. So you bring an external phase lock loop, and then you take the output of the phase lock loop and enter it to the, and feed it to the microcontroller, or they make it easier for you. The manufacturers of this microcontroller made it easier for you by in integrating an internal phase lock loop inside the microcontroller, which you can use to scale the incoming frequency up. Okay? Yes, sir. Doctor, to scale up the, the frequency? Yes, to scale up, usually. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll see it uh, shortly. How to do that? Uh, doctor, another thing can be asked about the pseudo uh, mode or uh, fully uh, stop mode. Why uh, yes. can't I use uh, يعني fully stop or what's the difference yes. between them? Uh, 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 in some applications, in some applications, you might want some of the peripheral devices to, to stay up and running, doing something while the, micro, uh, the rest of the microcontroller resources are turned off. Or are not working in order to reduce in power. Oh, okay. okay. So, uh, 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 what things, uh, 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 what peripheral devices can be allowed to stay uh, to keep to stay up and running during the pseudo stop mode? You can refer to the sheet, or we will talk about them when we talk about some of the peripheral devices, whether they can be. Uh, 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 Turned off or allowed to be to stay up and running during the pseudo stop mode. All right. So the rest of the bits, if you look at them, all of them end with WAI. WAI means wait mode. So as I said, these bits specify how different features of the CRG block behave during the wait mode, whether they are enabled or they are disabled. As I said. Uh, for example, if you if you um, uh, set this bit to one, this implies that the RTI, the real time interrupt, is enabled, is working during the wait mode. Even if the microcontroller enters the wait mode, uh, the RTI will stay, will keep uh, working. Okay. Uh, the phase lock loop, and as we said, it is used to run the microcontroller with a clock frequency different from the incoming OSC clock signal, and it usually results in a more stable a clock. The PLL has uh, uh, one advantage of using a phase lock loop is basically it has a feedback loop which can uh, stabilize the, the clock. It uh, reduces the deviation of the clock signal from its nominal frequency, from the frequency that you see. 
So if you are working at two megahertz, usually the most oscillators, they don't produce two megahertz all the time. It could be plus minus some value. So in other words, there is some tolerance. Now the phase locked loop makes this tolerance uh, very small. It reduces the variation in the clock. In other words, it produces uh, uh, a stable, uh, a more stable uh, uh, clock. Now, as we said, you can scale the incoming OSC clock signal by some factor in order to produce the PLL, uh, the PLL clock. And how to do that? Basically, you can, sp uh, you can, the frequency of the PLL clock is basically the frequency of the oscillator clock multiplied by two, multiplied by sin register plus one, div uh, divided by ref dev register plus one. And what is sin R ref dev? Basically, these are two special registers related to the PLL operation. Uh, 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 the first register, uh, CRG synthesizer register, basically has six bits where you can store some value here. In other words, the value that you can store here is from zero to 63. And the ref dev register basically is a register where you can store four bits as a divisor. So this is the divisor, and this is for the denominator, and this is for the numerator. So you can store here any value between zero and 15. So if you set, if you have this register, if this register contains all zeros, this register contains all zeros, what is the minimum clock that you can have for PLL? It will be two times oscillator clock. So at least you can scale the uh, you can scale the incoming clock uh, by two. You can scale the incoming uh, clock by two. However, if you if you store in the ref register, if you in the ref register, if we store, if we store, uh, let's say four or three, and store zero in the same register, what will be the PLL clock? It will be two times oscillator clock times one over four. So it will be half the oscillator clock. So you can scale up or you can scale down by, by storing different values in these two registers. Now, how to select or how to make the microcontroller use this clock, the PLA clock? As we said, there is a special bit in the CRG select register or the clock select register. If you set it, this will tell the microcontroller to use the PLL clock, not the oscillator uh, uh, clock. So uh, uh, there is a special function register, which is called the PLL control register, which is the register responsible for controlling the phase locked loop block. And there are many bits inside this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, block. Uh, those related to the uh, phase lock loop is this one, which is PLL on. You turn PLL on, the module on or off. This does not mean that you are using the PLL as the clock generator. This only turns the module or the block, the block on. Now, how to select? Uh, how to select PLL to be the clock? Basically, you need to go to this register, which is the CRG select bit, and set this bit, PLL select bit. So you need first to turn on the PLL block. Then you need to, sell, to tell the microcontroller to use its output as the clock by going to this register and making this bit one. Now, if I go back to the PLL control register, it has also other bits, which are the SCME block, SCME block, uh, bit, uh, CME bit and SCME bits, which are related to the enabling the clock monitor the block and enabling the selfie clock mode uh, for this, this is the CGR, the CRG block, which are not directly related to the 
PLL. This is, these are related to the CRG block uh, uh, in terms of enabling the clock monitor to monitor the oscillator. And if you enable this bit, if you make it one, then if there is a failure in the clock monitor, the C, uh, in the clock, the, C, the clock monitor will trigger the selfie clock uh, mode, the selfie clock uh, mode. Okay, so this bit is important because it enables or it turns on the uh, phase lock loop uh, lock. In other words, uh, it can be used to, to scale uh, the incoming clock. However, to use its output as the system clock, you need to go to the CRG control register or CRG select register to select the PLL uh, clock. Um, now, uh, there are many details related to the PLL. If you go to the data sheet, there are many details. What I'm interested uh, with in, uh, in this context is how to turn it on, how to turn the PLL on, how to use it, use its output as the system clock. And in order to do that, basically we need to take care of these two bits, these two bits which are uh, available in the CRG flag register. So, so far we have talked about three registers related to the CRG block, the CRG select register, the PLL control register, and three as the CRG flag register. And in this register, there are, there are, uh, there are uh, uh, some bits related to the PLL, and these two are of importance to us. The lock bit, is basically is a flag bit or a status bit. It is a flag or a status bit. And what does this bit tell us? What is the status that this bit reflects? If you go here, lock status bit, it tells you what is the meaning of different values of this bit. Zero, it means that the VCO is not within the desired target frequency. One, it implies that the VCO, the PLL VCO, is within the desired frequency. And to put it uh, in simple words, if th this bit basically tells us whether the PLL is uh, very close or is effectively producing uh, the required frequency or the desired frequency. So if this bit is one, it tells us that the PLL is ready is uh, uh, the output of the PLL is stable and very close or similar to the desired value, which is a multiple, a scaled value of the input oscillator clock. However, it is, if it is zero, if it is zero, then this implies that the PLL clock is still far or still away from the desired frequency. It is still away from the Z frequency. And what is the advantage of this bit? Basically, we need, we can check it. If we want to use the PLL clock, we can't use it immediately. In other words, we can't use it as soon as we turn on the PLL because the PLL will need some time to stabilize, will need some time to get to the desired frequency. So, before we switch the system clock to the PLL clock, we need to make sure that the PLL clock is stable and very close to the uh, uh, desired frequency. And how can we know that? Simply by writing an instruction or instructions that check this bit, which is the lock, the lock bit. And as long as this bit is zero, this implies that the PLL clock has not settled down, has not converged to the desired frequency. Once it is one, one implies that the PLA clock is stable and has converged, or it is very close to the desired frequency, which means we can use it as our system clock. Uh, so basically, we need to wait for, for this bit to be set after we turn on the PLL before we switch to the PLA clock. In other words, before setting the PLL select bit in the CRG selection register, okay? So this is one of the flags in this uh, 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 register, which is very important. It tells us 
uh, whether the FPLL has stabilized or uh, uh, not. Another bit, which is uh, uh, um, the look IF. The look IF, and this bit is basically an interrupt flag, lock interrupt flag. This bit, basically, if you look down, it's, you, can, you don't need to memorize these bits. You usually have all this, and you need to know how to use them and what is the meaning of each uh, them, each of them. The look IF uh, bit, basically, this flag is set to one when the clock when the lock status bit it changes this uh, zero no change in the clock in the lock bit one the lock bit has changed what does this mean basically the pll when it starts it's away from the desired value so the lock bit is zero now once this once the pll reaches the desired value the lock bit is one now this change forces the lock if bit to be one and this bit can be used to interrupt the microcontroller to execute a certain interrupt service routine related to the pll interrupt related to the pll interrupt so the pll block is associated with an interrupt and what is the event that causes this interrupt basically the phase lock loop frequency uh, has it changed either from uh, either from the locked value or out of the locked value okay which means the lock bit has it changed uh, 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 so this bit may change during the, uh, uh, the operation of the phase lock loop the lock bit may change because the phase lock loop may uh, might be affected by some noise let's say or some change in the supplied voltage. So this will force the frequency that's coming out of the phase lock loop to change. So the lock bit will, will be zero. Now this change from one to zero will also set the lock IF bit. And if, if this lock IF bit is set and you enable, uh, you enable uh, this bit, in the CRG interrupt enable register, you can force or interrupt the CPU of uh, inside the microcontroller controller to execute some interrupt service routine related to the PLL lock change. Whether you change from uh, uh, from uh, zero to one or one to zero, whether the lock bit changes from zero to one or one uh, uh, to zero. So you can enable an interrupt. So this is the, the local interrupt enable bit, lock IE, for the phase lock loop event that is related to the lock status, whether the frequency of the PLL is close to the desired or it is far. And this may change over the course of operation. And whenever there is a change in the lock bit, this flag will be set to indicate that there is a change in the lock bit. There is a change in the mode of operation of the PLL. It has diverged or it has converged to the desired frequency. And if this bit is set and you enable the interrupt, the lock interrupt enable, then you can interrupt the microcontroller to execute some service routine related to this event. For example, if the lock bit changes from one to zero, which means that the PLL clock has been disturbed, then you can, in the interrupt service routine, you can basically change the clock back to the oscillator clock and uh, leave the PLL clock alone because it is it has diverged. Yes, Marwan. Doctor, we have to finish the program. We PLL. ما بيكون لسه ريدي تو ما بيكون اللوك زيرو تاعته صح؟ ستيل نوت ريدي يعني انا حتى استخدم ال بي ال ال لازم احط الفاليوز المناسبه بهدول الريجسترز بعدين اي تيرن اون ذا بي ال ال باي سيتنج ذيس بت تمام بعدين اي نيد تو وانس ذا كلوك از ستيبل ذا بي ال ال كلوك وانس ات از ستيبل اي نيد تو سويتش تو ذا بي ال ال كلوك باي جوينج باك اف يو جو باك 
to this register and set this bit to one. And one, when, when, when can I do this? Only when the clock has stabilized. And how do I know that the clock has stabilized? By basically waiting or checking this bit. As long as this bit is zero, I cannot use the PLN clock. Once this bit, this bit is one, it, it, it means that the PLL has locked, has reached the desired frequency, and I can use it as a clock for my system. Uh, so I need to continuously check this bit, or, or we can use interrupts. Uh, so basically, we uh, do something else. We configure the PLN. Instead of waiting it by pulling or checking this bit, we basically enable the interrupt. So when the lock bit changes, we enable the interrupt. And in that, in the interrupt service routine, we basically write the instruction that sets this bit to one. That sets this bit to one in order to switch to the <coughs> PLL. Tamam? Marwan, Saad? Ah, tamam, tamam, doktor. Tamam. Okay, so I know there are too many registers, there are too many bits, but you don't need to memorize. You need to know where is the information, how to use the information, and I'm not covering every single bit inside these registers. Uh, especially for the PLL, as I said, there are other features related to the PLL and other bits, for example, the auto bit, the A ACQ bit, and, but I will not talk about them. Then, if you are interested, you can read the data sheet. All what you need to know here is that we can scale the clock, uh, the oscillator clock using this block. Uh, and what we need to do is basically to turn this block on to wait until the generated clock is stable and has converged or has locked to the desired value. And then we can switch the system clock to the new uh, uh, clock. I arrive. دكتور هسه مش اللوك بت هي بت... هي اللي بتخبرني انه انا كلوزر للديزايرد فريكونسي او لا صح؟ اكزاكتلي exactly. طيب هسه هي باي ديفولت راح تكون زيرو اكيد انا ما راح اوصل لل... للستيبل فريكونسي من اولها بالضبط ف ماشي لما يصير 1 هسه اللوك اي اف اجباري اوتوماتيكلي راح يغير بما انه الستيتوس تاع اللوك تغير اللوك اي اف راح يتغير ل 1 صح؟ اكزاكتلي exactly. طيب هسه لما يصير 1 راح يخبر السي بي يو انا لازم اعمل انترابت طب ليش اعمل انترابت ما دام انا صرت كثير قريب للفريكونسي اللي انا بدي اياه لانك يو نيد تو سويتش تو ذا بي ال ال كلوك اور يو نيد تو سويتش اوت اوف ذا بي ال ال كلوك اه يعني في انترابت سيرفيس روتين بتخبر السي بي يو في هذا السيرفيس روتين انه لازم يو كان يس يو كان دو ات يوزنج ان انترابت يو دونت نيد تو كونتينيوسلي بول ذا لوك بت اوكي لما تضلك تستنى اللوك بيت بيسكلي بتضلك تخلي السي بي يو تسوي الشغل تبعها وبتسوي انيبل للانترابت من هذا البيت اللي هو اللوك انترابت انيبل لان وانس انه صار في عندي لوك يعني صار البيت هذا تغير اللوك بيت تغير من 0 ل 1 تمام هذا الفلاج 1 تو انديكيت انه ذير واز ا تشينج ان ذا لوك بيت بالضبط اند اف ذا انترابت از انيبلد يوزنج ذيس بيت Basically, the microcontroller will do an interrupt. It will be an interrupt on the microcontroller. Okay, let's see an example. It is a very simple code, how to do it. There is a system that derives its bus clock from the PLL circuit. And it has a crystal oscillator of 8 MHz. The desired bus clock is a 24 megahertz. It is 24 megahertz. Write an assembly subroutine and a C function to perform the configuration. Configuration for what? Configuration to use the PLL as the main clock uh, or as the system clock, but it, is it has to be configured to produce a clock of 24 megahertz from 8 megahertz. So it's very straightforward. Usually we need to do some calculations. We need to uh, do some configuration. Uh, in other words, we need to store some values in the uh, uh, special function registers related to this uh, operation. Then we write 
uh, uh, our uh, program. So the system clock frequency is 48 megahertz. Why it is for 48 megahertz? This is the main clock. And what is he talking about here is the E clock. The bus clock is basically the E clock. So basically, the PLL clock is usually is derived, uh, the system, uh, the PLA clock has to be 48 because it will be uh, used as the system clock. And if we want the E clock to be 24 megahertz, then the main uh, or the system clock or the main frequency, uh, the main oscillator frequency should be 48, which is times two, which is E times two, which is E times two. So now we need the PLL clock. If you go to the equation, we want the PLL clock to be 48 megahertz. And this has to be derived from an oscillator of with eight megahertz. So just to plug this and this, and now we need to know the value of this register and the value of this register to end up with this value. So there might be multiple answers. There might be multiple choices for these two registers. So here he say, we want 48 out of eight or out of 16. So 16, it has to be multiplied by three. So if you set the same register to three to two and this register to zero, you will have three by one, which is three times 16, which is 48. So one possible answer is to set this register and this register to two and zero respectively. Okay, so now we figured out what are the values to be stored in these two registers. So next, let's write a subroutine called set clock eight. This is a subroutine in assembly, which we can call in order to switch the system clock from the oscillator clock to the PLL clock. And what is inside this subroutine? Basically, we need to store the values that we just computed uh, for in the same register and the reference divisor register, which basically we store two in the same register, zero in the ref DV uh, register. So this is the first step. Then we need to turn on, if you remember, we need to turn on the PLL block. And this can be achieved by setting the PLL on bit, if you remember, the PLL on bit, which is in this register, the PLL control register. And if you go back in the slides, this is the PLL control register. It has eight bits, if you remember. And the bit that is responsible for turning on the, the PLL is this. This is the PLL on bit. This is the PLL on bit. Go back a few slides and you will see this, this, uh, uh, this register. So we want to make this bit one. That's why we stored, we stored 60 hex in it. So we will store zero, one, zero, 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 zero. So all other features are disabled, such as the clock monitor, the selfie clock mode, but we are turning on the uh, PLL. So after the execution of this instruction, the PLL the block is turned on, but we cannot use its output immediately as the system clock because we need to wait for the clock to stabilize. And how do we know that the clock has stabilized? Basically, we need to check the, if you remember, the lock bit that is in the control on the CRG flag register. As long as this bit is zero, this means that there is no this the clock is not stable and we need to wait. And this is done here basically using uh, this instruction, which is a branch if clear, branch if clear. And what we are checking, well, which thing, which bit, what are the bits that we are checking? We are checking the lock bit. Where in this memory location, if you remember this instruction from chapter two, in the CRFG register. If you remember this instruction, basically we uh, check one or more bit in some memory location. So if this is the C, 
RG flag register, we want to check if the lock bit is zero or not. And the lock bit, if you go back, is this bit. This is the lock bit. And when we write the branch clear instruction, we basically specify the memory location, then we set the mask, right? And then we set a label where to branch if the condition is true. And what is the condition? If the best bits specified by the mask are all clear, we branch to this label, right? We branch uh, to this label. So what is the label here? He did not write a, a label. He, write, he, had, he wrote star. What is meant by star? It means a branch to the same instruction. So this is equivalent to writing some label here. We say, for example, L, L, and we say here branch to L. It is the same. So basically, this is the mask, and this is this is the mask, and this is the memory location or the register that we are checking the lock bit. Now this lock. We did not write a mask. Now the mask, our mask should be, we are checking this bit. So we are checking this bit. How can we check this bit? What will be the mask? Zero, no, sorry. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. So it should be zero X or dollar sign zero eight. If I, if I, if, uh, let me go back to the PLL. Uh, yes, the lock bit is this bit. So the oh, my mask should be eight zero. So this instruction that I have here, if I want to write it clear uh, in, a, uh, in a better way, branch if clear, CRG uh, flag register. Go to this register. Check the bits specified by this mask dollar sign eight zero then a branch to wait for example and this is what so a check this sorry not eight zero zero eight you check this bit which is the lock bit this is the lock bit in this register if it is clear which means we have not the clock has not stabilized wait for it here so the program will wait, will keep waiting here until the, the lock bit is set. And once it is set, what do we need to do? Basically, we need to switch to the PLL clock. And how to do that? We need to go to this register, which is the clock select register, and store 80 on it. And why 80? Because 80, the clock select register, it has eight bits. And the most significant bit is basically PLL cell bit, which is the bit that we want to use, we have to use to switch to the PLL clock. So the value to be written here is basically we need to set this bit. We need to set uh, this bit uh, in order to switch to the PLL clock. So we write move byte hash dollar sign eight zero two crg select oh clock select register of course now writing this value we will write other bits right and other bits has something to do they are they control other features what if we don't want to do this we don't want to change these bits. We only want to change this bit in order to switch to the CLK, to the PLL clock. What instructions or what instruction we can write? To change one block only. Yalla, one will answer the question. Do you use the Mohammed or? Is it possible? If I want only to change this bit, so basically, I need to perform an OR operation with this between the CRG, CRG select register. I need to OR it with 
8 0 مضبوط والدولار ساين 8 0 حتى اغير بس هذا البت بينما باقي البتس will not change because they are zeros okay and then we just have uh, to return from the uh, interrupt from sorry from the service routine which is return from service um, routine by the way we saw this before in one of the examples uh, earlier one of the examples has used this i think uh, the examples that were related to the seven segment display well, where we changed the clock frequency. So this function is in the textbook, which is used to change the clock of the microcontroller from eight megahertz to 24 megahertz. In other words, the E clock is 24 megahertz, which is derived from an oscillator clock that is 8 megahertz using the PLN, using the PLN. Okay, now this is the same uh, thing, however, it is in C. So it is a function in C called set clock. It takes no input arguments, it takes, it has no output arguments. So this is essentially, you can easily relate it to what we had in assembly. Here we set the value of this register. We set the value of this register. We set the value of this register to enable or to turn on the phase locked loop. And this is very important, which is equivalent to the branch if a clear instruction. Here we say, while the CRG flag register ended with this mask is zero, is zero, do nothing, wait. This is an end loop. Once once this condition is false, and when this is condition is false, when the CRG flag register contains one in the lock bit, the and this and will become one. Its complement is zero, so this condition will be false. You exit the while loop, and what do you do, you do after you exit? Basically, you or the clock select register with the PLL select mask. And all of these are defined in the header file. PLL select basically is this value. It is defined in the header file to be this value, which basically stores one in the PLL select bit. So this bit is already defined. This is a mask value. This is a constant defined in the header file and I can use it and I can uh, uh, use it. It is similar to the way these registers are defined in the header file. So instead of memorizing where is the PLL select bit and what is the mask value to store in this register, or what is the value stored in this register in order to enable the clock, the PLL clock, so basically we write this, we use this, we can use this, it's okay, it's, as long as it is defined in the header file okay so next time we will continue we have a few things to to say about the other features in the crg block and uh, hopefully we will finish this chapter uh, uh, on wednesday okay yes and uh, yeah yes doctor كنت بدي اسال احنا يعني مش كان احسن لو عملنا نفس الاكزامبل بس انت عملناه از انتر هلا انا بدي اطلب منك بالهوم ورك تسوي از انتر اه اوكي ماشي تمام هلا الطريقه اللي سويناها هون سواء بالسي او بالاسمبلي وات وي ديد هير ذا واي وي نيو ذات ذا بي ال ال از ريدي تو بي يوزد از ثرو بولينج ذا فلاج so this is pulling, essentially, this is pulling. We are just waiting, you are, we are wasting our resources, just waiting the PLL to finish. Yes. Right? Now, if I have something else to do, it can be possible to go and let the CPU to and enable the PLL interrupt. Once it, the clock is ready, it will interrupt the, uh, the other tasks and switch to the PLL clock. 
اوكي دكتور بصراحه كان عندي سؤال ثاني اه كمان كيف يعني كيف ايش في سيركت يعني بتختار يعني بتسوي يعني بتزيد الفريكونسي يعني انا بالعاده اللي بعرف انه ممكن اقلل الفريكونسي بس ان ازيد الفريكونسي شو السيركت الانسايد هي البي ال ال هي البي ال ال فيز لوك لوب في جواتها في سي او فولتج كنترولد اوسيليتر وهذا الفولتج كنترولد اوسيليتر بيشتغل بناء على الانكمينج كلوك اذا بتحب انت تجيب لنا معلومات عنه اتس اوكي بس يعني انا ما بدي اضيع وقت واشرح الكترونكس ذس از الكترونكس ذس از ديجيتال الكترونكس بس بيسكلي ذا سيركت انسايد ذا بي ال ال هي بيسكلي سيركت ذات كان ليت يو سكيل ذا فريكونسي اب تمام اوكي So uh, next time, as I said, we will continue. We'll talk about two important things, few important things actually. Talk about the clock monitor, uh, COP, and uh, power modes, and the real-time interrupt, which is very important. The real-time interrupt. Okay. So, alaikum uh, shway. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, tomorrow, inshallah, I will post the second homework and as I will send you an email or a notification on the system once I do that on e-learning. This is the first thing. The second thing is related to the assessment to be carried out uh, during this course. You know that the vacation has been extended two more weeks and I'm not sure if we are going to be able to use the boards. So uh, I will, I'm trying to think of some, something, uh, uh, some alternative, uh, but I don't want to rush into it. Um, uh, I will check if uh, the problem that we cannot use our cars. Um, let me think about it until next time, until Wednesday. But most likely, if we if we are going to drop the practical project, uh, we need to do some, let's say, uh, term paper. You look for some topic related to embedded systems, uh, such as uh, you talk about recent architectures of microcontrollers. Uh, you talk about economical aspects related to embedded systems you know you talk about let's say some something trendy uh, topics related to internet of things because internet of things are essentially embedded systems with network capability basically uh, so this is the best alternative that i'm thinking of right now is to replace the practical project with a term paper for a 50 for 15 points uh, we have already uh, we already have agreed to you to have homeworks for also 15 uh, 15 points or yes 15 points so we already had one so probably we will have two or three more homeworks we need to do uh, more homeworks and uh, so this is a total of 30 uh, points so uh, we have 70 points left uh, and for these 70 points the university has declared two strategies one strategy is based on the fact that we go back to the university before uh, may 1st and in this case we will we will hold a midterm exam and a final exam and that's what i'm hoping like we can go back to university by mid of april uh, continue the material and uh, hold a midterm exam by the beginning of May and the final exam by the end of May or after the eight. The second strategy that the university adopted is in case we can't, we will not be able to go to the university before May 1st, then the final exam is worth 70%. There will be no, um, there will be no, um, Midterm. So 70% is too much for me. 
So the computer engineering department um, somehow has decided to make in, in the second uh, scenario, if the final is going to wait to weigh 70%, then 50% will be uh, dedicated to a written exam, written final exam, and the 20% has to be uh, assessed uh, using some coursework. And the only thing that I'm thinking of is uh, um, to do some quizzes and to increase the weight on the, on the homeworks and the term project or term paper. So let me think about it carefully before I make my decision, but I'm not optimistic. Uh, I don't think we'll be, we'll be able to go, even if we go by April 15 to the university or 16, or even later, I guess it will be because April two weeks, two weeks from April 1st, Wednesday, a dish zero. So most likely we will not go back before 20. So there is no time for you to give you the board and to build a project. Can you? That's why I said, let me think about it uh, carefully. بس دكتور يعني الخيار اللي كويزز انا شايفه يعني كثير كويس طبعا انا ما بدي ارجع لكم هلا انا راح اسوي كويزز اي ويل دو اي ويل تراي تو دو ميبي وان كويز ايفري ويك سو ذات وي هاف سيجنيفيكانت نمبر اوف كويزز سو اف وي جيف ذيم لايك 10% اور 15% ذن اتس لايك كايند اوف اكسبتابل we have, let's say, four quizzes or three quizzes, then each quiz is five points. And the second thing, uh, we may increase the term project to uh, maybe 20%. So we have 15% for the homeworks, 15% for the quizzes, and 20% for the term paper. So this is a total of 50%. So we have the exam, the final exam for 50%. Okay, so by next time or by next Monday, a max, we will have, uh, we will define our uh, policy uh, for this course. Uh, sorry, Dr. Amgata. Yani, uh, the announcement can in the Yom al Arbi'ati quiz. So, is there a quiz or not? Uh, this, uh, yes. Yani, the Yom al Arbi'ati. I will do quizzes anyway. I will do quizzes anyway. Okay. Okay, just in case we need them. But you need to work for them as if they are used in your assessment. طيب دكتور كيف ممكن يعني طبيعة الكويزز بي أونلاين يعني is it يعني كويزز يعني هي هي راح تكون الكويزز the quiz will be through e-learning. يعني من خلال ال e-learning I can create a quiz. I can put questions and these questions could be multiple choice, could be short answers, could be long answers. I can, it is very flexible. It is oh, very okay. flexible in e-learning. Um, so I will ask you general questions. For example, write this sequence of instruction, replace this instruction, uh, do that, do this, very short uh, answers or multiple okay. choice or I, I will not ask you in the quiz, I will not ask you to write a complete program, okay? Hello. I may ask you, uh, what is the output? What is the value? What is the uh, sequence? Or what is the what is the best sequence of instructions and so on? Okay, Doctor, there is one thing I was going to ask you. Now, in the materials, meaning after the chapter five, we are going to go back to SMK. يعني زي هلا الاخر اكزامبل حليناه آه يعني راح تشوف يو ويل سي دائما كل ما نشرح موضوع غالبا غالبا يوجوالي وين وي ديسكاس اني توبيك وي ويل جيف ذا اكزامبل بوث ان اسمبلي اند سي موستلي طب احنا مطلوب منا بوث كمان مش غلط ما فيش عندنا شيء نسويه بالكورس ضل بدنا نشيل الاسمبلي لا لا مش مش عايش بس يعني انا 